Peter, always great to have you on the program. I'm going to start out with an easy question. What do you think is going to happen with the Fed tomorrow? Well, you know, the Fed is probably going to continue the pretense uh, that it can end the QE program, uh, which it can't. You know, it did QE2 because QE1 didn't work, and it did QE3 because QE2 didn't work. And, you know, it can't end QE3 either. You know, people think that the Fed can end this program because they believe that it worked. Well, it didn't work. In fact, the bubble economy that the Fed inflated is more dependent on quantitative easing now than ever before. Okay, and you've come on the show before. You have called for QE4 or some other stage of this, even if we do get an end to QE3 tomorrow. Uh, what do you think that's going to look like? Could the Fed just keep interest rates low and keep the market propped up? Well, it can only keep interest rates low for as long as people believe that the process is temporary. You see, what's keeping a bit in the dollar is the false belief that the Fed can actually end QE and raise interest rates which it cannot do unless it's willing to let the economy go back into recession, which, of course, we need a recession because the economy needs to heal from all the QE because the QE has actually weakened the structure of the economy. Every problem the Fed tried to solve, they've made worse. So the economy is in much worse shape today than it was before the Fed began with these programs. But in order to let the market you know, unwind the imbalances, we're going to have to have a severe recession. We're going to have to have another financial crisis, unfortunately, worse than the one we had in 2008. I don't think the Fed has the stomach for that, which is why I think they're queuing up QE4. Take away the supports, the market will collapse. It's interesting, though, Peter, because everybody knows potentially this end to QE is coming tomorrow, yet the market continues to rise today. And you even had the traders on just a couple of moments ago saying the little blip that we saw to the downside was just a temporary correction. So what is it that the market doesn't know today that all of a sudden it's going to know tomorrow when QE ends? Well, just because it ends doesn't mean it ends for good. I mean, there was a pause between QE and QE2, and there was a pause between QE2 and QE3. In fact, they even threw in Operation Twist. So even if the Fed brings QE to an end tomorrow, doesn't mean they're not going to you know, resurrect it uh, in a month or two. I mean, Quantitative easing has come to an end as expected. The Fed citing the substantial improvement in the labor market. For that change, the Fed is maintaining, however, its forward guidance that the Fed funds rate will remain at the current record low target for a considerable time now that the asset purchase program is over. But there's some new language in that guidance as well. There's also new language on inflation and concerns about the inflation running too low. And there's also new language on the economy suggesting the Fed does see some improvement there. Let me read first, first of all. From the forward guidance language, the committee anticipates, based on its current assessment, that it likely will be appropriate to maintain the zero to quarter percent target range for the federal funds rate for a considerable time following the end of its asset purchase program this month, especially if projected inflation continues to run below the committee's two percent longer run goal, and provided that longer term inflation expectations remain well anchored. However, if incoming information indicates faster progress toward the committee's employment and inflation objectives and the committee now expects that increases in the target range for the federal funds rate are likely to occur sooner than currently anticipated. Let me walk you through more of the comments with regard to inflation. Inflation has continued to run below the committee's longer-run objective. Market-based measures of inflation compensation have declined somewhat. Survey-based measures of longer-term inflation expectations have remained stable. The statement goes on to say, although inflation in the near term will likely be held down by lower energy prices and other factors, the committee judges that the likelihood of inflation running persistently below 2 percent has diminished somewhat since early this year. And finally, Mark, with regard to the economy, economic activity is expanding at a moderate pace. The Fed is repeating in this statement, labor market conditions improved somewhat further with solid job gains and a lower unemployment rate. On balance, a range of labor market indicators suggest that underutilization of labor resources is gradually diminishing. Mark, they have removed that reference to a significant underutilization of labor resources, so a reflection of improvement in the economy. The vote here, Mark, was not unanimous. We had one dissenter, Nariana Kachi Lakota, a dovish dissent, if you will, voting against the action, believing that in light of continued sluggishness in the inflation outlook and the recent slide in market-based measures of longer-term inflation expectations, the committee should commit to keeping the current target range for the federal funds rate at least until the one- to two-year-ahead inflation outlook has returned to 2% and should continue the asset purchase program at its current level. Uh, he was the lone dissenter this time around. Nobody else but me. Just go look at the tape. So you're never wrong. Peter, I think that this is now, actually I didn't just say that. Dangerous. You said this that. This is but dangerous. But I will tell you this. I am wrong less often than every other guest that comes on this program. Bar none.